Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back. So we are actually not down in the dungeon today. We are up in the kitchen. So a little change of venue. Got a quick experiment. Excited to try here. It's actually fueled by a conversation I've been having with some viewers. Posted comments on some of my previous videos. They've been having some success with some higher supplemented substrates using a poor boy slash redneck cooler pasteurization technique actually holding the substrate at a higher temperature for a prolonged period of time using a cooler and getting away with it. Now these are substrate compositions that would traditionally have been sterilized, but if we can get away with just doing a prolonged super pasteurization in a cooler, all the better because that is less energy intensive and easier to do. So we're talking commercial level supplementation here, guys, we're going big. So there's two main supplements that people are using in their wood-based substrates now. You got your soy hall pellets, master's mix, and wheat bran. I played around with both. I found that wheat bran has been a little less prone to contamination. It's worked out better for me in my experiments. And also anything wheat-based in my area is super cheap because we grow a ton of wheat around here so I can get bran cheap. So we're going to try and see if we can get away with a 20% brand supplementation here with this method. So what I have is we're using 3T filter patch bags right from Unicorn Bags. It's usually what I'm using for my substrate. We have two pounds of oak hardwood fuel pellets in here. I'm going to add half a pound of wheat bran to this. Then we're going to go with three pounds of boiling water to hydrate and get our pasteurization rolling. My goal here with this method is to hold the heat in this cooler as long as I possibly can so I get that prolonged super pasteurization effect. So probably the best way to do that would be to heat the cooler up, which I am going to do with some boiling water. And then once you drain the water off, you could just pack this thing full with substrate bags because sawdust is a really good insulator. It's going to hold the heat. But for this experiment, because I don't want massive failure, I'm just going to do two bags. So I'm going to improvise a little bit. This is also a pretty good cooler I'm using here. This isn't the $500 Yeti, but this is a $125 cooler. It's a nice igloo, thick walls. I think and that's going to help hold the heat as well. This is definitely not like the cheapest cooler you would find at Walmart or anything. I wanted to go with a decent cooler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some boiling water in the cooler, close the lid for a little while, just let the cooler itself heat up. Then I'm going to drain that water off. Then I'm going to take a clean bath towel I have here. I'm going to put that in the bottom, then I'm going to pour another pot of boiling water over the towel, thinking that's going to really help hold the heat in this cooler. Then I just have a couple little plastic racks here, you could use anything. And then once I add my three pounds of boiling water to my substrate and impulse seal the bags, I'll just put the bags in there on top of the racks, close the lid, should be good to go. I'm also going to use this digital meat thermometer. I'm going to have the probe inside the cooler in between the two substrate bags. And that way we'll be able to monitor what our temperature is doing inside the cooler. My plan is to let this go about 12 hours in the cooler. At that point, we will pull the bags out, let them cool, and inoculate. So this would be awesome if we can pull this off, because like I said, this is production level supplementation here, commercial level supplementation. With my simple in-bag pasteurization method, I've been able to go up to 10% bran, still have success as long as I spawn heavy, but I have not been able to go to 20%. So if we can pull this off, this will be epic. So let's give it a go. So I'm just weighing out my three pounds of water first, then I'm going to go ahead and add my eight ounces of wheat bran to that. Just kind of mix it up and make a slurry. That's the easiest way I've found to add bran to my fuel pellets this way. It keeps all those little bits of bran from sticking to the inside surface of your bag. And all you have to do is impulse seal and they're ready to go in the cooler. Put the temp probe in place, seems to be holding around 165 Fahrenheit. It is still slowly climbing, just ticked up to 166. 
So we'll just keep an eye on it, see what the temp does over time, but we're definitely in pasteurization zone right now. We'll let it go for 12 hours, that's the plan. Then we'll cool them down and add our crane spawn. All right, it's about 12 hours later. We're still at 126 inside the cooler. Still nice and steamy in there. It's good to me. We'll see what happens. All right, guys, so, so far so good. Just a quick update here. Our blocks actually colonized beautifully. And I just pulled them out of the refrigerator. I did a 24 hour cold shock in the fridge. Now we're going to go ahead and move these to fruiting. So I'm just doing my usual method here, taping the top of the block back nice and tight. We want to eliminate all this open space up here. I'm just going to cut a big X shaped slit in the front of the bag. And hopefully this area here will just explode with some beautiful oyster mushrooms. So, so far so good. Cut our slits, move them to fruiting, and we'll jump back in when we have some mushrooms. We are still, I would say, three to four days away from picking these, but we are on the road to success here, I would say. We have a beautiful pin set. I'm going to try and open up the plastic here and give you guys a little close-up look. This beautiful pin set we have going on these Bratislavian blue blocks. I'm trying not to move this chamber too much just because I have my GoPro going on the other bag. Trying to do a time lapse of the mushroom development. Let me see if I can open this plastic a little bit. All right, I got you zoomed in a little bit there too. So really happy with the way these are looking. Should be a really nice comparison too with the 20% brand because I have a couple other videos using this exact same strain just with straight pasteurized fuel pellets and also with my experimental buckwheat hull HWFP blend. So it'll be cool to see how the final yields compare but for now these are looking gorgeous wanted to just give you guys a quick update so you could check them out kind of in the pinning early mushroom development phase but in a few days we should be picking these so we'll check back then time time for the big weigh-in hope you guys enjoyed that time lapse that was my first attempt with my GoPro it was five minute intervals over about a three day time span it's pretty cool watching those mushrooms develop I'll definitely be doing some more of that thought it turned out pretty good I should have probably picked these yesterday time got away from me a little bit I'm starting to curl up a little bit still not terrible they'll be just fine but ideally I should have picked these yesterday when they were a little more incurved on the margins. Look at that cluster. It's a beauty. All right, here we go. So we got just over two pounds off of two blocks for our first flush. Beautiful, beautiful oyster mushrooms here. Yields are a little higher than what we see off our straight pasteurized fuel pellets, which is to be expected with the higher levels of bran. I'm really happy with the way this experiment turned out. Why does this matter? This matters because this is the first time I've been able to go this high with bran, this high with supplementation, and get away with a low energy pasteurization method. So this is important because as mushroom cultivators, we all want to maximize our yields. Whether you're just a home cultivator or a commercial cultivator, you want to get the most amount of mushrooms for your effort. It's not easy growing these things. This is a lot of work. So you want to get the most mushrooms possible. And higher levels of supplementation is an easy way to do that. So with this method, if you're just a small scale cultivator, home cultivator, you don't have any steam sterilization, autoclave type equipment yet, you can still use commercial level supplementation and get away with it using this method. All you really need is just hot water and a decent cooler. And the other thing is this is way less energy intensive. Using hot water and then holding that heat 
to get an extended heat treatment and extended pasteurization is way more energy efficient than using a steam sterilizer or, a, or an autoclave because with those pieces of equipment, you're constantly cranking heat to your substrate where with this process, we're just introducing heat and then holding on to it. So the only real drawback I see to this method is that we have to use high spawn ratios. We're putting a lot of spawn into our blocks, but as I've mentioned before, for me, spawn is inexpensive, it's easy to make, so I don't mind doing that. I don't mind making that sacrifice to have a much easier, lower energy heat treatment method to do high nutrient substrate. Also, if you're a small scale commercial cultivator that hasn't purchased or can't afford steam sterilization equipment yet, autoclave, steam sterilizer, anything like that, this method could be easily upscaled to do a much larger number of blocks. Now, oysters are pretty aggressive, so just because I got away with this, with this Ostriatus strain, of course doesn't mean that you would get away with this with any species. You may run into contam issues with slower growing species, but for oysters, this seems to work really well. We did get really nice yields, but I do have to say that our yields were not as high as they were with our experimental buckwheat hull, HWFP substrate. That's still the winner in terms of overall yields versus this 20% wheat bran. I will link that video in the description of this video so you guys can check that out if you haven't seen it. All right, so I'm going to cut it off here. This is beautiful close-up footage of our Bratislavian Blues. I love this strain, just always kills it no matter what I try it with. Definitely hit me up in comments, let me know what you think. If you try this method, let me know how it works for you. Big shout out for sure to PA Dirt Fisherman. He is the first one to propose this cooler pasteurization, extended pasteurization technique to me. I know I have talk to other subscribers, viewers about this too. So sorry if I forgot your names, but thank you too. It really makes a difference, guys, when you comment, give me ideas. You know, sometimes you get set in your ways and talking to other people, other people proposing ideas helps you think outside the box. That's how this experiment was born and it turned out really cool. So in the future, we will definitely be trying this with other species. I'm also gonna try this with soy hauls. PA Deer Fisherman said he was using it with some soy haul blends and having success. Definitely hit me up in comments, guys. Let me know what you think, and I will catch you next video.